Hi, welcome to a short discussion on mental health parenting. For this session, we are going to talk about the impact of this pandemic on our children. Mental health has become a global issue, especially today. Why? Because a lot more are getting ill, not only the adults, but also the children. In fact, this pandemic has aggravated the situation. How do I know? 45 years ago, something happened that made me change my focus. One day, I was rehearsing a show at Pope Pius XII Center. They have a small theater, and that's where we rehearse for our big shows. And one day, after rehearsing, around five o'clock, we packed up and I went backstage to check if the equipment were all in place and, and the usual things. On my way out, I saw in the corner of the backstage, I saw a figurine. There was some light hitting it, and I was wondering where did it come from? As if it was there was a spotlight on it. So I went and I picked it up. And this is what I picked up. A figurine. I don't know if you can recognize this. For Catholics, I'm sure you can recognize this. Okay. This is the figurine of uh, the baby, baby Jesus. Right. And what I noticed is what it was really battered. So I took it and I went outside and I looked at it and I said, boy, this must be uh, very old or just simply battered and just left for the garbage man to come and dispose of it. But something also happened on that day. In the morning, I read an article about children being verbally and physically abused. Long article. And I was telling myself, is this a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that uh, you know I saw this figurine and I read this article on the same day? When I was traveling back home, I was thinking, maybe this is not a coincidence. Maybe it's a message. That night, I decided to focus more on producing shows for children. Because at that time, they said to produce, uh, to, to help the children become more responsible, you need to provide them with values education. So I said, I will focus my attention on values education. And I kept track of what was going on as far as uh, their uh, physical and verbal abuse. Because I also wanted to know uh, what uh, what type of shows I should be producing. So, so that's what I did. And many other companies did the same thing. They were producing values-oriented shows. And the educators were also doing values education just to help the children. And after 25 years, I was asking myself, was there any change? More or less at, the, at that time, I'm talking about 25 years ago, I decided to focus on doing workshops for companies. I needed the money and I felt that, you know, they could provide me the income that I need. So I did what we call soft skill training. And I came up with a program and I called it, uh, I love my job. And apparently the title really caught fire. And you know, I got a lot of companies wanting me to do a workshop. And there is where I found out that the parents, the young parents had a lot of mental health issues. I was really surprised. And there I was talking about children and here all of a sudden I am exposed to parents 
with mental health issues. Let me tell you a story of one of the workshops. This happened hmm, around 15 years ago. It was in a uh, company uh, based in Laguna. And um, my workshops always uh, include uh, interactive discussion. Uh, I divide them into groups and uh, six members in one group. And uh, I tell them to talk about a certain topic or a certain question and to share it, to share uh, the, their answers to one another. The objective is for them to discover for themselves uh, what they can do to achieve their goals. So anyway, one of the questions that I asked them to answer is, uh, what were the significant memorable moments when they were, when they were children that affected their lives, uh, positive and negative, that they have used as their guide or has affected them in the way they think and what they do? And in that session, after five minutes or so talking, I saw a young professional girl uh, started to cry, you know, and she, she, was, she was sobbing. She was really, she, she, as if she couldn't breathe. And she stood up and left. I said, oh, I wonder what happened. Anyway, during the break time, I got to meet her along the way. And I said, hi, um, are you okay? I said, are you okay? I mean, is there anything um, I can do? I said, I said no, sir. Um, thank you for this workshop. I just realized that I was verbally abused by my parents. And that is why my life is a mess. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But that's good because at least now you know. Now you know uh, why you have been doing what you're doing, which is, which is not good for your life. So now you can say, okay, that's enough. And I can start doing what I think is the right thing to do without having been, uh, having, uh, uh, without having, without being affected by this past experiences. So, okay, that was fine. I have another story. Okay. This one is um, a friend of mine actually uh, was a, um, a participant and um, called me up and says, sir, I need your help. I said, how can I help? I said, my best friend was an OFW wants to commit suicide. And um, I've been telling her to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but she does not want. I said, I, said, I am not a psychologist or, 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 a, uh, or a psychiatrist. I'm not. It's okay, sir. I mean, because you're a motivational speaker and hopefully you can help. I said, okay. So, so uh, I got in touch with her. Um, and we use Zoom. And uh, she was telling me that she wanted to die because she was having a problem with her husband. By the way, they're OFWs. Both of them are working in the Middle East. Both of them are engineers, except that each one of them are in different places. And she had really uh, dark bugs uh, under her eyes. I mean, you know, uh, she says she has not been sleeping. She's been very anxious. She can't work. And she says, I just want to end it all. She says, I said, why? Because I don't feel love. I don't feel love by my husband and by, and by my family members. Oh, uh, I am sure your parents love you. I said, no, they just want my money. When I was a kid, they told me, wala akong silbi. 
now I'm trying everything to provide them with what they need. And yet they don't treat me well. I just want to end it all. I want to die. I said, I said, what about your kid? I said, you know, and you know what? I said, don't look for people to, who will love you. Love yourself first, I said. You first, fix yourself up first. Forget the rest. Don't think about what other people have to say. Start with yourself. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I had a one hour talk with her and, and what I found out the following day is that there was a change in her. Oh, I said, thank God. <laughs> you know, I didn't really think I could do it. Uh, but anyway, that's what happened. So, what do we have to do now? I mean, why am I saying all of this? Because now, during this pandemic, the situation is worse. The children who are confined in a small space with parents who have not gotten any courses on parenting, who are doing things that unknowingly are hurting the children, are now much more exposed to their children and more opportunities to hurt them. They are all feeling jailed. They want to get out. They can't. One lady called me up or told me that her daughter wants to commit suicide because she cannot handle this online teaching. She's so pressured, she just wants to commit suicide. Wow. So, what are, what other things are the children thinking of right now? And we as parents, of course, we all love our children. Okay, most of us really, really love our children and want the best for them. And most of us, however, do not know that they have a problem now. So what do we do? What do we do now during this pandemic period? How can we help our children? Parenting, as most of you know, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. You are dealing with children who are growing, who have different objectives, goals as they grow. They have different concerns. And yet, most of us parents have not gotten any courses on parenting. We just simply rely on what we experience as a child rely on what our parents have told us what is right and wrong. Or maybe sometimes talk to some parents, but that's about it. And yet we have as our responsibility, our children to help them become the best they can be. Well, there is still hope and we can still do something about it. But it's not going to be easy, all right? I mean, it will require some commitment from the parents. First, we need to manage ourselves, what we say, what we do to our children, okay? That's not easy. Like I said, parents have their own concerns. They have their own stress, things that are stressing them out. They also have their issues of what happened to them in the past. So now they just have to say, wait a minute, what can I do to help my children? Okay, so they have to manage themselves. Secondly, they have to create the ambience. Okay, it's very stressful nowadays, right? People losing their jobs and, uh, you know, you can find in one place and you have school, uh, that, uh, online, uh, online uh, teaching, and we ourselves are not used to what, uh, 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 used to this condition. And, you know, so 
In spite of all of that, we have to create an ambiance that will help the children feel better. And just, hey, good morning, feel good. Okay, be grateful and all of that stuff. We also have to start understanding our children more. We have to focus and see what are their anxieties, what are their fears. We have to address that. Okay, another challenging thing that we need to do. We also have to assure them that things are okay. That things are okay. No, uh, not to worry. Because you know what children are thinking of right now? What if we die? What's going to happen to them? They will have no food, no house, or they won't be able to see their friends, or so many things. So there's a lot of insecurity in their lives. So what we say and do to help uh, assure them that things are going to be okay, that is another challenge that we as parents have to do. And these are the things that we're going to be talking about next week. We're going to focus on these four things, okay? And we will move on from, from there, all right? I hope you enjoyed this short discussion and uh, will join us again next week, okay? Or just check uh, our talks uh, in YouTube, right? It's all there, right? We all want to be good parents and we are parents forever. So let's do what we have to do. All right. Have a good day. Bye.